Welcome back. My 32 female husband, 45, and I had a great life. When we first met, he was working in construction. He was a big, strong man with a great sense of humor and an even better personality. He had a great sense of duty and responsibility and an unbelievable work ethic, which made him a man of his word. Those things made me fall in love with him almost immediately. We went on a few dates and hit it off very soon after we got married. My husband always had bigger dreams for us and he put in the work. Years later, he started his own construction company, which grew over the years and is currently competing with some of the biggest and oldest construction companies in our city. That company was his baby and I was there for him from the beginning, every step of the way. A few years ago, he started experiencing painful pressure and an abnormal lump in his lower abdomen. After ignoring it for a while and deeming it as probably an injury from work and that it would heal soon, I insisted he go to the hospital, where he was then told that it was a tumor and it was cancerous. He had surgery and they successfully removed it. Best of all, the cancer hadn't spread so we assumed that that was the end of it. That same year, my husband surprised me with a bakery that he had personally built. He said that he remembered that I've always wanted to be a baker and that it would be a great time to start since the kids have started school. I had the time. That was the greatest thing anyone has ever done for me. Our lives went smoothly from then on. Life was great. Until recently, my husband had been diagnosed with cancer again, but this time it was prostate cancer and they caught it at a later stage. The doctor said that his chances were slim, but not impossible, so they encouraged him to continue treatment. The treatment has been taking a toll on his body, and his health seems to rather be deteriorating than getting better. During all this, our neighbor has become a regular at my bakery shop, always been a supportive shoulder to cry on. Due to his bad health, my husband is no longer that big, burly man that he used to be, and I've started to see the man that he used to be in our neighbor. His hugs complete me the way that my husband's hugs used to complete me. He's the same build that my husband used to be before the cancer. I don't know how or when our affair started, but I'm glad it did. I'm much happier with my neighbor and I spend more time with him anyways, as my husband is constantly in the hospital. I'm no longer satisfied with our marriage and I've wanted to end things for a while, but I don't want to seem like a bad person to our friends and family by leaving him when he needs me the most. So I have no choice but to wait him out. I started dating my neighbor secretly and we both agree to keep it a secret under my husband's cancer takes its course. Update one. This was initially supposed to be a vent rant post and to share my experiencing hoping to find people in a similar situation as mine. But this escalated here and in my marriage. A few weeks back, my husband came back unexpectedly early from an abroad trip that he went on to get alternative treatment. He caught us, me and my neighbor boyfriend, in our marital bed. He was as shocked as we were. When he paced with a gun at the foot of the bed, I thought he would kill us, but he walked off. He left the gun in one of the safes, went to pick up the kids from school, and went to his sister's place. I didn't hear from him for a while, so I took the initiative for both of us and filed for a divorce. He now wants full custody of the kids and is trying to buy me out of the company that we built together. I'm sick with worry. Who will take care of the kids when he dies? Does he really think he stands a chance at winning this case? I don't understand his line of thinking. Update 2 It's been a while since I last posted an update. I had a physical altercation with his sister, and that bastard had me locked up in a mental asylum. I found out that this man is fighting for custody so that his sister can raise my kids while I'm still alive. And well, she consented to that. How else was I supposed to react when they were trying to take my kids from me? Initially, I went to her house to talk to her and then she started talking down at me as if she was talking to a child. I couldn't control my anger and blacked out when I came to my senses. Her living room was destroyed. She had end bruises. The worst part is that the police had me pinned to the floor and my kids as well as hers were cowering behind her as if I was some sort of monster. I think that is their plan to make my kids hate me and see me as some sort of lunatic. Edit. He wants to take everything in the name of the kids. He said that the construction company is his legacy for the kids, and he's put his share in a trust that the kids will have access to when they're 21, 
and wants to buy out the shares that he gifted me so he can put them in the trust as well. He said that I could keep the house, cars, bakery, and the money in our shared bank account. But he wants the company shares and the kids. He says that his sister and her husband are better suited to raise them. He probably thinks I'm stupid. The construction company is our family's cash cow that keeps on giving, and I'm not giving up my kids. I know I'm despicable, but I have nothing to lose. I'm already beyond rock bottom. I'm hitting the lava. Update 3. It's been messy. This custody battle's taking a toll on my mental health. Due to that, I caused an accident at work, resulting in the bakery burning down, and they used that against me in court. Used my employees against me as a witness with a biased narrative of what happened. They had me psychiatrically evaluated, and the court deemed me unfit to raise my kids until I could solve my anger outbursts and pathological tendencies. I understandably had a bad reaction to that, and now I have a court mandate to stay in a psychiatric facility until I get better. My ex-sister-in-law has got my kids, at least for now. And my bakery has paved a way to a court case on ownership. My ex died a few days after he and his family took my kids from me. That's God's work right there. How do I get my life and my kids back after this? I do not know what to do or what to feel. How did I end up here? This cannot be real. I feel numb. Is it from pain or all the drugs? I have no clue. But I still have you fam, and for that I'm grateful. Comments I'm so sorry to hear about the difficult situation you're in. It's clear that things have spiraled out of control, and it must be incredibly challenging for you. Custody battles can be emotionally draining, and the loss of your bakery and your ex's passing must have added to the stress. Remember to lean on your support system and seek professional help during these tough times. Hopefully, you can work toward a better future for yourself and your kids once things settle down. Hang in there, OP. Stay strong and stay focused on getting the help you need to improve your mental health. It's essential for your well-being and for your potential reunification with your kids. Keep reaching out to your support network and professionals who can guide you through this challenging journey. Sending you strength and positivity during this difficult time. My DMs are always open in case you need someone to talk. Story 2 My friend, 30 female, is in a 5-year relationship. She's engaged, about to get married. She had cheated on her boyfriend, 30, with a very manipulative and bad man, 40, for many months. During that time, I had to cover for her. When I say cover, I mean I never told the boyfriend, even though I knew, because she told me. This was really wrong. I mean, I'm a person with principles in my ex, so lying for her has crashed my soul in a way. I always thought that the cheating didn't concern me and is none of my business, but her boyfriend is so nice and naive that I felt really bad about it. She's always asking me to be there for her in all her crisis and important moments. I mean, she demands a lot. When I need to see her talk to her, one time a month at the most, she acts like I'm so annoying and needy. I haven't seen her in nine days or so, and I called her to tell her a family problem I had. She was annoyed, couldn't stand me, and I talked to much about the same problems over and over again. She told me not to care about anybody or anything. She's always pushing me to get a boyfriend and tell me my life sucks because I'm single. She is selfish. All she cares about is her problems, boyfriend and lover, going out, her projects, her emotions, her needs, whatever. What happens to me is nothing and she's annoyed if I tell her about my problems. Yet we had talked so many hours about her affair and I never complained. It feels like I give and get nothing in return, but how's that a surprise? She loves her boyfriend more than anybody, and she cheated on him, so it's obvious that she only cares about herself. If she doesn't give a damn about betraying the man she's getting married with, how can she care about some friend? Edit. I should also add some facts. My friend did regret the affair, and she wanted to hurt herself because she does love her boyfriend and her lover was very insistent and stalked her a lot. I was there for her, helped her cut ties with the lover and heal her soul. Then, my friend said she needed to forget the past, so she cut ties with the lover and all the friends that knew about the cheating. Two friends and me. My friend did not speak with me for seven months or more. I was really depressed for a while, but I went no contact and accepted her decision without problems. I even hugged her and told her that she deserves a good life and I wished her the best. Then she came back seven months later and apologized. She cut ties with the other two friends, but went back to me, 
even though I know her dark secret and all that embarrasses her. Sometimes I wish she never came back at all. I think I've run out of patience. Edit. I could cut ties with her, but I don't want to ruin her life. Her boyfriend is all she has, and they plan to get married. She would kill herself without him. I also do not tell her boyfriend because he had one violent incident with her. He pushed her to the ground once, but they work it out because he did a lot of work to change, therapy and all. I do not want to be in the middle of this toxic relationship because it could end up really bad. I also don't have proof, is my word against my friend and she's a master of faking. Her family boyfriend believes she is an innocent, intellectual, good-hearted girl next door that cooks and helps people. I know who she is. She even wanted her lover to suffer when he was in the hospital sick. She has a dark soul and trusts me her darkest secrets. I just want to get away from her. She gives me nothing. Engaging in infidelity is inherently self-centered. Are you surprised by her selfish behavior? It's time to stop providing her with support. Cease communication as it's clear she doesn't value your friendship. Remove her contact information, avoid her calls, and block her. Seek out new friends who share your ethical values. If she reacts negatively, firmly request that she respect your boundaries and refrain from involving you in her drama. Let her know that you're prepared to inform her boyfriend about her true character if necessary. Personally, I would consider disclosing the situation to him regardless. It appears she's manipulating both of you. And while it's painful, it's also causing harm to her boyfriend, which you're inadvertently enabling. 